Thank you all. Uh, Tom Tillis, Center from North Carolina, calling from North Carolina. I should, I should tell you that one of the reasons why we're seeing the increase in the number of cases is not because the virus is spreading more quickly, it's because we're testing more effectively and on a broader basis. In North Carolina, for example, we've done almost 20,000 tests with thousands more being processed, and there are about 100,000 tests being uh, conducted each day nationwide, according to the administration. There are uh, almost 700,000 tests have been completed at this point, and that pace is just going to accelerate because we're getting faster tests. We've uh, now uh, found out over the weekend that Abbott Laboratories has a test that's more of a rapid test, very similar to a flu test that can be done in a matter of minutes. The, the, the challenge there is it won't go to everybody all at once because it requires certain equipment that several uh, healthcare providers have, but it will not be on a broad basis. But you're going to continue to see that increase in testing. And as we do that, we're going to increase the denominator. And I believe that we will see mortality rates remain uh, stable or, or fall below the 1% mark. That's not my opinion. That's based on the, uh, the, the medical professionals and clinicians that are looking at the data. Uh, here at home in North Carolina, we do want to make sure that everybody is paying attention to state and local measures that have to do with social distancing, certain closing, certain stay-at-home orders. Um, every elected official, from the president, from the Congress, down to the, uh, the local level, are making the best decisions they can based on the information that's changing literally overnight. Um, we hope that we can avoid a, uh, a statewide uh, shelter-in-place order, and I think the governor is just taking measured steps to make people conscious of what they can do to help prevent the spread of the virus. And that's one last thing. And by the way, the, the, the best recommendations from the CDC and from the state agencies is if you think that you have the virus, do not go directly to the doctor or urgent care. Call your doctor. If you don't have a primary care physician, call your local health department and get their advice on how best to be seen or tested. If it turns out you don't have COVID-19, the last thing we want to do is put you in a setting where you may have greater exposure to it. So please, and if you, if you will just heed the advice of state, local, and federal agencies, if you feel like you're ill and you think you may have it, contact your doctor, contact an urgent care facility, contact your local health department, and seek their advice on what to do next. Please make sure when you're out you're observing social distancing and the, uh, the, the space is very, very important. Washing your hands. Uh, the, the medical professionals say that washing your hands several times a day is one of the best things that you can do to combat the virus as soon as we uh, get through the last piece, and that's the economic relief package. We, uh, we passed a $2 trillion economic stabilization measure last week on a bicameral, bipartisan basis to provide resources directly to individuals who may have lost their jobs. Uh, this could be independent contractors, others who would not necessarily qualify for unemployment insurance. Uh, the families, individuals will receive a check of $1,200. It's a one-time payment. Um, couples uh, would be $2,400. And if you have children, $500 per dependent child. Those checks will start moving out of the uh, uh, they will be distributed through the IRS, authorized by the Treasury, over the next couple of weeks. It will probably take three or four weeks before we'll start seeing a steady stream of checks going out because they're going back to 2018 and 2019 tax filings so that they can identify those who are qualified for it and get those out the door. So that's individual assistance. It is not a loan. It is a, a one-time check to help us get through what we hope is another next four to six weeks before we start seeing a significant decline in the uh, in the rate of infection and we have a reason to believe that that's going to happen because it has happened in other countries that got the infections earlier so if we do our part 
on social distancing, on making sure that we're being uh, smart about the way that we go about seeking care. If you think you're exhibiting symptoms, then hopefully this will be sufficient resources for individuals. The other piece of the bill is a, um, <clears throat> is a package for businesses. This package has a combination of what are effectively grants and then loans. So for some of the larger businesses that have been affected by this as a result of public policy decisions, shutting down uh, international transportation, limiting transportation within the United States, there will be resources available for collateralized loans. <clears throat> so taxpayer dollars will be used to uh, provide loans, but they will be collateralized based on the assets that these businesses have. Now for small businesses, we also have uh, the opportunity to provide them with loans. You're gonna be able to go to any FDIC approved uh, lender and your traditional small business administration lender and uh, seek a loan. If you use the loan proceeds to pay for your employees, so in other words, making payroll, that will be a grant. You will not have to pay that portion of the loan back. If you use it for some other purpose, uh, then there will be uh, there will be a repayment period. It will be an, uh, an, a um, a low interest loan. But that gives uh, you an idea, and I'm sure we'll get to questions. I'm going to go ahead and start now. Uh, I just want to know, uh, you like to know you like like people that's on Social Security, do we get that? I understood that everybody got that that didn't make $99,000 a year, and could they send it to our automatic deposit of where we where we get our Social Security checks at? Uh, yes, ma'am. Num number one, you will receive it. Uh, whether or not most of these will be electronic deposits, the fastest way to get to you. Um, and so I, I would have to, and I'll have my staff looking at it right now to determine whether or not if you're receiving your social security payment on uh, through electronic deposit, whether or not that's gonna be the way they'll do it. So if you stay on the line, um, we will uh, we will make, uh, I'll, I'll confirm that uh, in a few minutes after they track it down. I, I do know that most people who have filed tax returns in 2018, 2019, who have also opted for an electronic uh, deposit, that they will be receiving uh, that through electronic deposit. Um, I will tell you also that uh, these, the checks that you're receiving are not subject to federal income tax. Um, so <clears throat> I've had that question asked in, in the last town hall, I believe, but this, if it's $1,200 per person, $2,400 per couple, plus $500 for each additional child, that one-time payment is not subject to taxes. So think about it this way. If you, uh, depending upon what your tax bracket is, you don't have to discount this payment by how much you think you have to pay in taxes. This will not be subject to federal income tax. Um, thanks y'all again for joining the call and Carolyn as, as soon as I can see whether or not we can get your answer I know that we have your phone number so if not we'll have a staff call you up and answer you if, if uh, you're not on the on theirs. we're doing everything we can and I hope that you all will do your part thank you all God bless thank you all for watching if t uh, Senator Tom Tillis does provide the answers to the questions that we submitted uh, we will publish those on Bladen Online. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.